Science tells us that the inner experience in your heart, in my heart, that our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our prayers, our beliefs in our bodies have no effect on the world beyond our bodies. Do you believe that? No. I'm going to tell you, there is a language. There is a language that lives in every human that walks this earth. It's a language of no words. It's a language of human emotion. It's a language that was lost to Western traditions 1,700 years ago. But it's a language that has been remembered in ancient and indigenous traditions. So if you're like me, you like to know what this day is all about. Do you know what today is all about? Do you even know what we're going to do? Would you like to know? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. The bottom line, these are false assumptions. There is something in the emptiness. There is no empty space. It is alive. It is pulsing. It is living. It is intelligent. There is a field of energy that holds everything together, and you and I are part of that field. There is a practice in the United States when babies are born prematurely. The first thing they do is separate the babies. Now, can you imagine living in the womb of your mother for six or seven or eight months and living close to another being, your twin brother or your twin sister, and hearing the heartbeat of your mother every day? And suddenly, you're taken from that environment. And the first thing that happens is you're separated, and they put one twin, one premature baby in one incubator, and the second baby in a second incubator under the hot lights of the intensive care unit in the hospital. They put them in separate rooms, lying on their stomachs face down. That's what they do with the new babies, the premature babies. So these two baby girls came into the world, and this is what happened. They were separated, taken to different rooms, and immediately one of the little girls began to fail. Her vital signs began to drop. She was dying. There was a nurse who was working at the time. And the nurse said, I must do something or this baby will die. She said, I'm going to break the rules. I'm going to break the protocol. And she reached in, picked up the young baby that was dying, she took her into the intensive care unit with her sister, and you know where the story is going, you know what happened. She put the weaker girl in the incubator with the stronger girl. But this is where the story gets really interesting. And this is what tells me what I'm about to share with you is something that we are born with. It's not something that we learn, because here is what happened. They put the weaker baby girl in with the stronger one. And immediately the stronger one reached out with her arm and placed her arm around the shoulders of her baby sister. And the minute she did that, the instant the instant she did that, her sister's vital signs stabilized. And she got stronger and stronger and stronger, and they both lived. Okay, can you feel that feeling? Can you feel that? See, I, I can see you're holding your heart. Some of you have tears in your eyes. Why? That feeling, that feeling is a language. That feeling is a power that lives inside of your body. If I had walked onto this stage and said, now, have that feeling, it may have been hard to do. But you saw an image that gave you a reason for that feeling. You're still crying. It's a powerful story. It's a powerful image. It's true. 
And the two girls lived, and they're doing very well today. That feeling is something that does not happen in your mind. It happens in your heart. The image and the story went directly to your heart. It bypassed your mind. It bypassed the filters. It bypassed the logic, the questions, the conditioning, the judgment. It was just a feeling. Today, modern science is beginning to understand that that feeling that happens in our bodies has a direct effect on the stuff our world is made of, on the atoms and the molecules of our physical world. Some video footage of the healing of a three inch diameter bladder cancer inside the body of a woman who by medical, Western medical standards had been diagnosed inoperable. She had gone as a last resort to a medicineless hospital in Beijing, China. It was in this medicineless hospital where they began simply by addressing uh, the life-affirming ways that she could change how she was living her life. They taught her life-affirming ways to breathe and life-affirming ways to nourish her body. So in the video documentation, the film shows a woman lying on a, uh, in, in a hospital room. She's fully awake. She's fully conscious. She believes in the process that's about to happen. Before her, there is an ultrasound technician who is running an ultrasound wand over her lower abdomen that we can see on a split screen television. And on the left hand side of the screen, they do a snapshot, a freeze frame of an instant in time for reference so we can see what her condition looked like in that instant in time. On the right hand side of the screen, we are able to watch real time as three practitioners stand behind her, working with the energy in her body and with the feelings in their bodies. And what they do is they begin to chant a word that to them they've agreed upon that in reinforces the feeling within them that she's already healed. The chant essentially says already healed, already done. And as they begin to, to have this feeling and to say these words among themselves on the computer screen, on the television screen, we can watch in real time this cancerous tumor as it disappears in less than three minutes real time. It's not like time lapse on a documentary where you see a rose unfold uh, in 30 seconds in something that normally takes days. This literally happens in less than three minutes. Her body responded to the feelings of the practitioners who were trained to have the kinds of feelings that they were having. And all they were feeling was the feeling of what it feels like to be in the presence of a woman who is already healed, fully enabled, fully capacitated. They were not seeing her as a woman who was sick, and they weren't saying, bad cancer, you've got to go away. It's a very, very different way of thinking about things, and it's a very graphic example of precisely how, uh, how this principle works. Compassion is this force. So the ancient instructions, how do we do this? The instructions are very precise in the Buddhist traditions and what we're finding in Tibet. Number one, they're saying that to create the healing, to create the peace, to create the miracles, first, we must feel as if the miracles have already happened without judgment, without ego. And that's hard for the Western mind. So first, we must do this to feel as if our prayers have already been answered without judgment, without ego. Okay. Because the power to do so lives in every single one of you. The power to create, to heal, to love, to create peace in our world, peace in your family. To have the love and the nurturing that you choose and desire, that power is already in your heart. The secret is you must feel the feeling as if it has already happened so that the divine matrix can give you what it is that your feeling has just identified. To share with you one of these texts. One of the texts that was edited from our Christian Bible is in this monastery. And we saw it, and you're, you'll see a picture of it here, 
How many have heard of the lost gospel of Thomas? The lost gospel of Thomas. Some of you have heard of that text. Very, very powerful text. The lost gospel of Thomas is powerful because it is believed to be the actual words of Jesus as he was teaching those around him how to use the power of human emotion in his life. In this gospel. Okay, so here, here's what we're doing. We've been in the Buddhist monasteries in Tibet, and they're telling us that we must, that feeling is the prayer, one. Two, that we must feel as if our prayers have already been answered. Okay, and now we're in an Egyptian monastery with the texts that used to be our tradition before they were edited, and we're going to look at the instructions that tell us how to do that. You okay if we do that? Is that good? Okay. Gospel of Thomas. If you have a copy of the Gospel of Thomas, this is verse 106, translated from the Nog. And if you do not have a copy, it's in our books, uh, and you can, you can go to any library and pick this up. Verse 106. Look at what the lost Gospel of Thomas says. It says, When you make the two thought and emotion one, about thought and emotion. It's saying when you make your thought and your emotion one, look at what happens. You will say to the mountain, mountain move away and the mountain will move away. It's saying that when you can marry your thought and your emotion into one single potent force, that is when you have the power to speak to the world. The tumor that disappeared in the woman this morning, that is an example. When those practitioners had the thought of the woman being healed and the feeling and the emotions were all one, the mountain moved, the tumor disappeared. I think we're about to discover precisely that. 